Linux and Windows management with Ansible. Now this again is one of those five use cases for scalable infrastructure automation. Now before we even begin, again let's go have a look at our automation hub. Now the automation hub holds all of our certified collections and we actually have a certified collection for Windows. So if we go and have a look at this collection, we search for Windows, there we go, we have our collection here. This collection has a bunch of modules that we can use for Windows management, right? So you can see here all the types of tasks like working with services, even working with things like Active Directory, we have Ansible modules. So this is a great help because this means that we can now use Ansible to manage Windows quite happily. Now, if we want to go and deploy applications, we also have Chocolatey. So we have a bunch of modules that we can use in another certified collection, which allows us to work with Chocolatey and ultimately deploy applications to, to Windows environments. So let's have a look at our Windows system. We have a Windows system here. It's a fresh system. We have the GUI running. We can go straight into the dashboard. You can see that we have a few services enabled, right? Nothing special, nothing new, nothing different. Now, if we go and have a look at this web page, you can see this is pointing to the actual Windows system. There's nothing there. So nothing is being hosted. We can go have a look at a web server, which is on a rail box. Same thing nothing is there so what are we going to do we're going to run a template and we want to ultimately not only deploy uh, iis or deploy apache but we also want to put a basic web page right so we run in our template let's have a look at what's happening with the template now one of the key things here with ansible is we're using things like facts to be able to go and say what type of os this is now this might be a very simple example because we're basically running one playbook and in here we're addressing uh, a rail system as well as a Windows server but ultimately you could also split these tasks up. Perhaps you have multiple flavors of Windows servers, multiple flavors of, of rail. You want to be able to do you know different tasks on them. So we are able to use facts that we gather with Ansible and ultimately use this in our play. So if you have a look at what we're doing here, we've gone and we've deployed uh, Apache, we're busy deploying IIS, but we've also gone and triggered the update services at the same time. So part of this is updating those nodes. If these are two brand new systems in production, maybe my developers want to work on Windows, maybe they want to work on RHEL, who knows? We're able to basically automate and provision and configure these systems like they were all the same flavor of OS. So we can see this is this is all done. Now, ideally, I want you to just point out that certain tasks are skipped by certain flavors of machines, right? So we're not going to install Apache on, on Windows. Now, if we go back to our Windows system, you can see that IIS is already there. So let's go test the web page. Let's refresh it. And boom, now we have our Windows web page. Pretty simple web page, but we have a web page there and it shows you that we've gone and actually deployed it. Let's go check the RHEL system itself as well and let's refresh that. There we go, we have our RHEL page. That's how we can use Ansible to work with not only RHEL, but also with Windows. And this even extends to things like SAP and SQL Server and all these enterprise level applications.